Hi guys, Jace here, and I'm in my garden, so excuse the noises of the DIYs, the dogs barking, the planes flying overhead, the cars going past. Hopefully that won't affect it too much. But I'm here to review this baby, the Specialized Epic Evo Pro 2022. Now, first of all, I'll caveat that I'm not a professional reviewer by any stretch of the imagination, but it is my bike, so I'll review it as I see it. Also, I'm just a mid-pack rider, so I am not right at the top at the pointy end of things. So this is a review or what I think of the bike from a 50 year old average to good mountain biker. Now I've had the bike about six weeks, done 300 kilometers on it. First of all, let's go back to new bike day and have a look at the specs. It's a very exciting today because today is new bike day. I am English, so this is my very excited face. I am, however, looking forward to riding this little beast. Let's take a look at it. This is the Specialized Epic Evo Pro, and it's in a large. I normally take a medium, but I've got short legs and a long reach, and I always have to push the seat as far back as possible, so I decided to go for a large this time, and it looks and fits, I think, pretty well. I did weigh it in at 11.7 kilos, but I have got a few extra bits on it, like the stages power meter, the GPS mount. Uh, I have got a few bling bits, um, like Kashima uh, spaces and stuff like that. It has also got the XTR pedals on. It has got that rubbishy SWAT box in the middle of those two bottle cages that I will take off. For a large then, the reach is 460 mil. So it is pretty long and the top tube is 629. Now, importantly, the head angle is 66.5, which is a downcountry machine. It's got quite a long wheelbase at 1,194 millimeters. Of course, it's a 29er. Let's have a closer look at it. It's specced pretty well, as you can see. Suspension-wise, up front, it's got the Fox 34 factory, 120 mil. Out back, it's got the Fox Float DPS Shock, 110 mil in the factory as well and we've got a fox factory dropper post you've got the roval wheels control they're not the lightest version but they are still light we have got dt swiss 350 hubs pretty chunky pretty meaty but it goes with the whole look of the downcountry bike and we have got xdr for the drivetrain got the xdr pedals on there and we have got the two bottle cages on. I have got a K-Edge mount. I've got this because it fits with the SWAT tool. And you've got a nice tool inside, which makes it a little bit heavier, but it's very nice and neat. I was going to get rid of that, but because I just thought it wouldn't have something like a chain breaker. Now, the chain breaker is underneath here. So all you do is take your Allen key, undo it, and it comes out and it's got a chain breaker in there with a couple of spare links now we've got the next race face 35 handlebars 706 mil wide which is the same as i normally use which is good i didn't have to cut them down i've also got the turbine stem which i think is 60 mil brakes wise we have got the xtr four pot i think they're 9100 specialized power seat i have gone with a combination of ground control and the t5 which is a faster rolling setting and also the fast track in the T5. You can see there I've got the stages power meter on XTR cranks. And braking is finished off with those 180 rotors. Got a 32 front chain ring and moving to the back, I believe it's 10 to 51, 12 speed. First of all, let's look at it. Awesomely, aesthetically pleasing to the eye. It is 11.6 kilos, which actually surprised me. I thought it was going to be lighter, but it is a no compromise down country bike. So it's built for going quickly up hills, but just as quickly, if not quicker, down the hills. I know people have got these down to around about 10 kilos, but they have got lighter hubs, no dropper, two pot brakes, and the list is endless but I didn't want to compromise on the fun stuff going down and the trail riding. So it is what it is. It's 11.6 kilo, which is still about four to 500 grams 
lighter than my Norco Revolver. First of all, uphill, let's talk about how it rides up the hills. The not so fun stuff, unless you're an XC Whippet and about 10 kilos lighter than I am. Now, it does ride well uphill despite not having any lockouts and I hadn't felt the need to feel for the lockouts on the front or rear. So it goes nice and steady uphill without two bobbing. So it feels very efficient and it rolls well on those 29 inch wheels and it probably will ride even faster if I change this front tire to a fast track, which I will do in the summer or when it's drier. As soon as I put my foot on the pedal, you can feel the power transfer going straight through the bike and the momentum keeps you going. So I'm really happy with its performance uphill. It's just me that lags behind. Going up technical hills, it sits you in a really nice position. I've never felt like the front wheel is gonna come off the ground and it rides over roots <laughs> and steep stuff equally as well. I've never had to put a foot down yet on this bike and we've had some wet, pretty slippery conditions. Now this thing pointing down hills matches if not surpasses its ability up the hills. The Epic Evo is far more capable than its 110 millimeters of rear travel might suggest. When you point it downhill, it is sure, stable and quick footed. Comes into its own on the flowy downhill fast stuff and it is like a rocket. You point it downhill and it goes. Around the corners, I've found it stable and quick. On the slightly rougher stuff, yes, you have to pick your lines well. When you get a continual flow of ruts and bumps, you do have to work hard and try to relax, even though the Fox 34 copes with it relatively well. I think, yes, it could be improved with a Grip 2 damper, but I think it's probably a little bit overkill unless you're going to use it for lots of trail riding. I have ridden this bike on some steep and loose a sense yeah. and it copes yeah. really well and as i said before it is really stable you just point let go of the brakes and it will carry on and go and i've never felt like i'm going to fall off and 300 kilometers without falling off for me is a great achievement things i like about this bike i do like the fact that it's got the swat tools integrated into the frame i didn't think that I would care for them that much, but actually it is really handy not having to think about it and carry it. Now I have changed a few things on the bike, so just click up here to have a look at what I've upgraded. And you might notice that it looks slightly different from new bike day. I do like how comfortable this bike is. It fits me so well in a large. I've got short legs. I'm only 172 centimeters, five foot eight, but I've got a long body and it's got a 60 millimeter stem here and it just feels like it fits me like a glove. And the power saddle is very comfortable. I was very impressed how good the ground control and fast track tires were on the trails, in the wet, technical uphill and on some dry trails. I thought I was gonna switch them out after a few rides, but I'm actually gonna keep them and see how they go. Now, what's difficult to get on with the bike is how high that top tube is and the standover height. I've got short legs, so it is quite difficult for me sometimes when in technical terrain, I stand off or try to get back on the bike when it is steep. Also, when you're going down a trail and leaning the bike over from side to side, contacts my thighs a little bit quicker. So you haven't got quite as much room to maneuver the bike. Also the Fox dropper post, it looks good, but it does stick down sometimes. And if it does go kaput, I will change that with an axis dropper post, which works every time. Um, so I'm not that enamored with it so far, but we'll see how it goes. It isn't a deal breaker. Who do I think this bike is suited for? Well, someone like me, really. Someone that likes a nice light bike to go trail riding. Someone that loves a grade five, but also likes a long ride. It's suited for someone that likes epic days in the saddle, also that likes to race a little bit, whether it's stage racing or cross country marathons. So if you like those things, this bike will definitely be for you. Well, that's about it before the hammering starts again. Um, give me a thumbs up and a like, and please subscribe if you do like the videos, uh, because about 95% of you don't do it. Now, if you've got any questions about the bike or comments about your bike, 
please leave them below. And I'll see you out there on the trails.